Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Task Force Admiral Demo thingy, whatever you want to call it. So in this video, I'm actually going to make a couple more videos of this, just trying to utilize the resources of this demo we've been given. Again, it is not a, really a playable demo per se, but we can just really use the camera. And what I want to do in this video is just kind of give, you know, maybe some experience with what it might have felt like being aboard a destroyer, which would be guarding one of these task forces on the outer edges of the screen. So in this one, we're just gonna stay here on the USS Russell, which is a Sims class destroyer, and we're just gonna watch the whole scenario play out from its perspective. So she's got, you know, her 5 inch guns and her 20 millimeters just blasting away. Here come the Japanese. I think those are Kate's. Again, just to kind of give you uh, an idea of, well, this is the life of a destroyer man. You know, just to give a different perspective on the battle. I plan to do another one where I'm just going to watch the. Uh, watch the battle from the perspective of the cruisers, the heavy cruisers. And maybe another one we'll, where we'll completely just view the battle from the carriers. Yeah, and I just want to compliment the uh, the developers of this game for their, they have a very robust, or reasonably robust camera system on this, on this game. It works pretty well. It's, you can fine tune it as well. You can move the camera around. Either it's both a free camera, or you can lock it into certain perspectives. And even at that, when you uh, put the camera at certain spots, you know, whether it's an aircraft or a ship, you can look at the forward part of the ship, the aft part, port, starboard, whatever. But even then, you can basically, uh, you know, fine-tune the position of the camera using the WASD keys, as well as the shift and WASD keys to move slower. So again, very nice camera controls. A little bit jerky given that we are using a keyboard and mouse to do it. I don't believe there is any controls, however, in the camera system for changing the elevation of the camera up and down. So at least I don't think there is. That would be nice, I think. Uh, just a little nice little add-on if they could add those in. Okay, watching the carriers there. Now, all the aircraft in this scenario are specifically targeting the carriers. To my knowledge, they will not directly target the destroyers or the heavy cruisers. They're just aiming for the carriers. That's all the attack aircraft are going for. We will occasionally see some of these planes do some low flybys of our destroyer but they will not strafe us or attack us. Get some nice cinematic views. Although it is kind of interesting how that this camera perspective is like right over the smokestack. <laughs> kind of behind the fire control director, the main battery director, I should say. Whereas when we're going to see a little bit in the other half of this video, when I go to a, view the scenario from a Japanese destroyer, the camera placements on that one are a bit different from this American Sims class destroyer. Oh, here come the, here come the Kates. Or not the Kates, the, uh, the Vowels, the dive bombers. I think that's the Enterprise. Oh, she took one. And another. No, that's the Sarah to look, whatever it is. The other one, the non Enterprise one. <laughs> Enterprise there has got a hit up there over on the right side. Man, you can just hear them blasting away with those 20 mils, those Oerlikons. And it will be interesting to note that 
again, just the, the amount of flack that the American task force puts up from their 5-inch guns in comparison to the Japanese, the Americans put up a lot more flack. As well as the larger number of smaller anti-aircraft guns on the American ship, or on the Japanese ships compared to the American ships. The Americans just shove a whole bunch of, like, 20 millimeters on their, on their destroyers and cruisers. And they just start hammering away. In comparison, the Japanese anti-aircraft defenses are almost paltry in comparison. But again, remember that this game will take place in 1942, so our... For one thing, we haven't fully fleshed out our anti-aircraft doctrine, you might say. I mean, we, I mean, we knew how to shoot and all that, but again, you know, we know the theory behind it and we, they've practiced it, but you never really know until you really put it to the test, right? So we were getting lots of practice, for real, in combat. And furthermore, kind of anti-aircraft warfare, especially around this time, was very much kind of a numbers game. I mean, yes, those five-inchers are pretty accurate, especially when we start putting them under radar control and develop the VT fuse, but that would not enter the war until, I think, late 43. Here, they're doing everything the analog, old-fashioned way. Setting the fuses on those shells and just trying their best to calculate where that aircraft is going to be so the shell bursts at the range, proper range and elevation of the target. But even then, throughout the war, anti-aircraft, you know, fleet defense is very much a numbers game, just how much lead you can throw up in the air. Let's jump in here to the tactical view, yep, they're all headed back home. All right, let's check out the Enterprise here. She's got a fire there. You got any holes in her? Not seeing any. Now well, looks like she did okay. She's just she's just burning there. Now, how about the again, the Hornet, not the Saratoga, not the Lexington, it's the Hornet. She usually takes some torpedoes, but she might have scathed by this time. Nope, she's got some holes in her. That's eh, not as bad as we've seen it, but the fires, though, on that flight deck, she is out of commission. Yep. She's leaking oil all over the place. Alright, such are the trials and tribulations of the USS Russell. This whole task force is almost like a who's who of like some of the most decorated ships in World War II. The Russell herself earned 16 battle stars in the Pacific. Yeah. Alright, we're going to watch the uh, Japanese perspective now. We are now looking at the... We're going to be following the Arashio here. She's opened up with her guns right there. And the American strike has just entered the airspace. Those are... Devastators? It's hard to tell. Blasting her way over the 25 millimeters. Again, not a terribly impressive weapon. Her 5 inch guns are theoretically capable of being used for anti air work, but they track a bit slow. Not the greatest anti air weapon. At least for that job, especially when you compare it to the 5 inch 38 that the Americans had. And again, note the uh, 
the sheer difference in the amount of flack they put up compared to the American task force, quite a bit less. Again, all of the shells and bullets in, in this game are operating on a physics engine. What's cool is that when you see the shells burst over low over the water, you can see the splashes underneath them, right? As the flak, you know, the, the shrapnel hits the water. They're being overflowed. And again, I just want to note the uh, the different camera positions for the Japanese ships, at least for the destroyer, than for the uh, the American ships. I mean, the same, you know. Again, your your number pad controls the position of the camera, but just the way the camera is positioned, where it is on the ship, on this destroyer versus the American destroyer, is different. So I have to use a lot of the rear camera as well as the. Uh, port and starboard cameras on this destroyer versus the American one where I just kind of put it kind of in the middle. Okay, I'm not really making any criticism of that. It's just a little bit odd or interesting, you might say. And again, you'll notice these weird kind of graphical glitches. It is what it is. Early build, work in progress, okay? Alright, so the torpedo bombers went in. You can always tell because of the flak bursts. They're really low to the water. I think they probably dodged them all. The Japanese are, at least have pretty good seamanship, ship handling skills. They can usually dodge those torpedoes. Not to mention the fact that the uh, Mark 13 aerial torpedo that the Devastators would have carried was not a very reliable weapon. <laughs> then again, neither was the uh, Mark 14 slash Mark 15 heavyweight torpedo used by submarines and destroyers. Thankfully though, by like mid to late war, we had pretty much ironed out most of the the kinks in those torpedoes. Mark 13s, Mark 14s, Mark 15s. This version, ver Volume 1 of the game, as they envision it, you know, will only take place in 1942, so it's kind of early on in the Pacific War. It'd be pretty interesting to see, you know, just the, the, the armament, the outfitting of various ships and all that. I can only presume that later volumes of the game will take place later on in the war. You're just going to see a lot of ships just them just tack on a whole bunch of pretty much 25 millimeter guns to the Japanese ships. We'll start seeing 40 millimeter Bofors on US ships and all that. Tons of them. Again, one thing I just really want to see in this game is I want to see how it's going to handle surface combat. Both you know, in terms of just the gunfire and all that, how it's going to model that, the use of radar, as well as the use of surface fire torpedoes. You get a Type 93 Japanese torpedo coming at you, and that thing hits, you're going to have a real bad day. Okay, looks like we're just shooting at torpedo bombers now. They're going away. Uh, 
Okay, where are the Dauntlesses? Oh. There they go. Yep, they're taking some hits. Gotta dip, dive, duck, and dodge. If you can dodge a Dauntless, you can dodge a bomb. Yeah, for God's sake, son, you're about as useful as a cock flavor lollipop. Well, the carriers took a bunch of bombs. Yep, we got some burning carriers over there. Oh yeah, shoot at those planes with your 25 millimeters. You haven't seemed to hit, seemed to hit much thus far, but if it makes you feel better. Right now, I'm just thinking that I'm really gonna have to crank down the sound in these videos in post. Otherwise, you're just gonna hear machine guns blasting away. Again, I will uh, compliment the use of sound design in this game. It sounds very nice, very loud. All right, let's see. All the planes. Yeah, I think they've made their attacks. We've got a bunch of them flying over the carriers, though. What up with that? Now it looks like they're all high up. Well, that was the work done by the Arashio. Let's take a look. Shokaku, how'd you do? You have fires burning, you have leaking oil. You got at least one big hole in your side. Oh, two. Maybe she took a torpedo. Or that could be a bomb hit. But it looks like a torpedo. Again, a close miss can buckle in hull plating and cause flooding, so even if the bomb doesn't physically hit the carrier, if it's close enough to the carrier in the water and it detonates, you're going to have yourself some, a problem. Yeah, the Zui Kaku looks pretty good, but she's got three big fires burning on her flight deck. And she has slowed down. Get a nice little cinematic shot there. I also have noticed that yes, even in this scenario, the carriers will turn into the wind to launch aircraft. Again, that's just something I've, I don't know if I've seen thus far in any modern video game. Yes, carriers do have to do that. They gotta turn into the wind to increase the apparent wind over deck if they're gonna start launching and recovering aircraft. <laughs> 